Okay, so this hand we're covering today is literally an amazing poker hand. Um, uh, I got it off the Poker Stars channel, which it had like six million views. And if you want to subscribe to the Poker Stars channel, you should, because that's where you're going to get a lot of cool stuff. Uh, and this video is one of them. This video has been done, but I had to give it my two cents because it's like so remarkable and so awesome. And there's a lot that um, had to go through Ronnie Barda's mind when he's facing Miss Finland, you know, a strikingly beautiful woman and a great person who I had the opportunity to talk to before and after uh, her shark cage appearance. And uh, this hand is just like kind of mind blowing, right? So I think a lot of us, when we watch this, we're gonna empathize with Ronnie Barda and go, what the heck is happening right here? Um, and then we're also gonna look at you know, what did she do right? And what was just like, huh? So let's take a look. Time for the first hand of Heat 7. Everyone starts the heat with a million chips and we start the blinds at 5,000, 10,000 with a 2,000 ante. Hold. I'm gonna call. Okay, yes, great idea, Sarah. Love it, love you, I mean, I love it. She's lip with Ace Deuce. Me and Mrs. Finland right now, heads up. I believe it's Ms. Miss, I'm sorry, Miss <laughs> Finland. All right, let's, let's see a flop. So there's no Mr. Finland, okay. Okay, so right off the bat, you know, this play made me think, okay, who coached her? Because typically for these shows, right, when you have a shark cage or you have some sort of uh, televised event where you're gonna have some celebrities, they usually get coached by somebody. And when I coach these people, I've done it for several different shows in the past, my cardinal rule is don't limp, okay? If you're gonna play, raise, okay? So right off the bat, she comes in limping with a hand that really doesn't play all that well post-flop, ace two soft suit. If you are gonna play it, and I don't have a problem with it. She can she can raise with this hand. Um, I would lean towards folding, but raising's fine. Just limping is not the right, this isn't the right hand to do it with in this situation. And again, what that would have told me right away is that she really didn't get the coaching I would have expected. Or, I remember because I did this for Hollywood Home Game years ago, I had six celebrities on the show, right? Got them all, you know, practiced and everything. I go, okay guys, so what are we not doing? We're not limping, yay, right? What do you think happened on hand one? Six-handed table. <laughs> limp, 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 limp. Six-way action, limp to the flop. I'm like, okay, thanks for listening. Why am I even here? Ten, 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 ten. There's a four on the flop. Ronnie has bottom pair. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Ronnie, if you bust her on the first hand, he bets. 30,000. And Sarah raises with a straight draw. Do you have something? Yes, I do. I believe you. <laughs> I believe you. 30,000? Yeah. It's the way all my relationships start with lies. Okay, so first off, I have to comment on, I love the table banter. Ronnie Bart, a really great guy to have on your show. He's like very talkative. He's like, you got something. And then her, just deadpan, is like, yes, I do. <laughs> it's just fantastic. But let's look at the actual action in the hand. So Ronnie decides to lead here for 15,000. I don't mind the play. She limped in. That doesn't look like a board she's going to hit very often. So for 15,000, he's just going to pick up the pot a lot. He does have bottom pair. No problem, right? Now, she min raises to 30,000. And a lot of people will be like, what? I don't hate this play. I really don't hate it that much because... She has a hand that's worth at least calling with because she has the gut shot, she has ace high, she might have the best hand. So being an amateur as well, you can do a lot of goofy things sometimes to players who are professional and it like throws them for a loop. And like, I don't know what to do. Ideally, I would have liked to see her make it like 45,000 or 50,000, but she decides to make a min raise. And you know, if I'm Ronnie Bart, I'm like, well, I do have a pair. I get some backdoor goofiness and I'm just getting a stupid good price. And I don't know, but like you could make a case here though for Ronnie to just go, you know what, I'm, uh, who knows? I don't know what's going on here. Let me just fold now so I don't get myself into any trouble because who knows what she's got. So Ronnie has called the race and improves to trips on the turn. Oh boy. Why are you checking? <laughs> you raised me on the flop. Um, uh, num num. She bets just over half the pot. Ronnie, do not bust her before the swimsuit portion. Ronnie's clock is running. Remember, every player has 30 seconds per decision. If he thinks she's bluffing, he'll call. If not, he could raise. The shot oh, yeah, clock. I forgot Did that. Time. <laughs> raise, 155. 155. She really should not be calling this. 
255. She re-raises. What? Okay. I'm not used to those yet. <laughs> <laughs> really, huh? 255,000. Yes. Ronnie calls, which means we're going to the river, and that means the cage is coming into play. Hey, what was her special talent in the Miss Finland contest? Was it punting poker chips? Wow, so lots of fireworks on this turn card, right? Let's take a look first at her action, right? He checks it over, she bets 55,000 after raising the flop. So she's told the story on the flop that she's got a big hand and she's continuing with the bet. No problem with this one. Uh, doesn't look like Ronnie is gonna have a very big hand here. It's very unlikely as a four. Um, you know, he may have a queen, but he could have some straight draws that she's just gonna fold out. She might have the best hand. Um, but, you know, she's got to be thinking, and I don't know that she's thinking on this level. Like, if I bet this turn and he calls, I pretty much have to commit to firing a good-sized barrel on the river to bluff him off of a queen or something, and that might not even work. So I wonder sometimes when, especially amateurs, make a bet um, on the flop of the turn, and they get called, like, oh, what do I do now? Like, they make this bluff, but it's like, okay, you have to think about how to react if your opponent calls. Like, you don't want to just throw, you know, two two-thirds of the barrel, the triple barrel, without, like, finishing the job. So I'm not sure what she would have done here. Now, let's look over uh, to the other side of the coin here and see what Ronnie's facing, right? Now, Ronnie is thinking about this. He's thinking about Vegas and the Mirage, right? He's like, hmm, I got it right where I want her, right? He's thinking about how do I maximize value here? I'm up against an amateur player, right? Um, looks like she probably has a queen or something along those lines. So um, if I raise her here, she probably is never going to fold it so I can raise her back and then make a good-sized value bet on the river. Pretty standard play, right? What he didn't expect to see after raising a good amount was her re-raising 100,000 more. Now it's like, I mean, if you don't see the whole cards, right? If like we get to see them, we have the luxury of that, but if I'm Ronnie, I'm like, what is, like literally, what is going on right now? This is so strange. Um, she's repping a big hand, but she limped in. Does she have pocket queens and limped in with that? I don't, I don't know, queen five, four five, pocket fives maybe? Not a lot of hands she's representing, right? So, and you have three fours. You beat a lot of hands that she may think is good. And that's where, that's where things get tricky when you play with amateur players, right? Um, you overthink it to the point where you got three fours. Like, they might think that aces or kings are good here when you check raise. They might just think, oh, wow, I have a pair of aces. I limped in. I got this fish on the line, hook, line, and sinker. So I'm going to re-raise with my aces and get it all in. So it puts Ronnie in a bad spot. Now, I don't think Ronnie can do much here other than call. Uh, I don't think there's a lot of value in him just going all in. If she is bluffing or has the aces or something like that, she'll probably bet the river, and then, you know, you can pay it off with the three-fours. The board bricks out for Sarah. She has just ace high. Ronnie, she's a little better looking than you. We're kind of rooting for her. Sorry, <laughs> Yeah, <buddy>. I know. <laughs> Check. She's bluffed every street so far. All in. And she shoves! She slides out the bluff card. Oh, oh my god! How is this happening? I thought it would be. I wanted to stay and play with you, Miss Finland. I understand. I know I am. Ten seconds, Ronnie. Wow, I like that. He's playing a time bank chip. He gets an extra 30 seconds. There's a reason why it's the. Finish reputation, right? I have a four. He shows her his hand. You have five full or something? Sick, sick bluff, kid. I don't think you'd just raise a queen. I don't have a good kick. I can show both cards, right? Absolutely. Slight flutter from Sarah, but what does it mean? Oh, gee. Ronnie must think she has it. He's considering folding this monster. And if he does, he's going in the cage. He's requested more time. I don't know, do you play, how, often do you, how often do you play this game? Do you know I have a four here? You know I have trips. I don't know if I can fold this hand. I don't know how you play. I've never played with you before. What is going on here? If I fold this hand and, and they see this fold and you have like king queen or something, it's gonna be the most embarrassing thing ever for me. You understand this, right? I don't, I don't have any time to think over this hand. I'm like nervous, I don't know what's going on. It's nice over there. 300, 500. Oh my God, no, 600. Five seconds. And Ronnie's folded. Holy shnikes. It's a bluff. Show. She has ace high. Ronnie, you're going to the cage. 
<laughs> oh. He cannot believe it. I was really scared. Oh, my God. Oh, what? Yes. Is this real life? <laughs> that, just, no, that just happened to me? I almost had a heart attack. That was awesome. Wow, that Thank was fantastic. You, that you was got awesome. some balls, wow. girl. I could have two million chips. Oh, my God. <laughs> Good lay down. Oh, my God. Oh, yes, she did. She bombed the river. Pot size bet, and I love this. Like, if she's going to bluff it, Betting 300,000, 200,000 is a big mistake here because he's played his hand in such a way where he's probably going to call that. And if he doesn't, your ace high was probably good anyway. So she's doing the right thing here if she is going to bluff and sending a message like, boom, I'm there. Now, what do you do if you're Ronnie Barta, right? You've basically gotten a weird situation where it was a limp pot. You're in 8-4 offsuit with a big blind, right? And now you got three fours. <sighs> the problem here, I think for Ronnie, is that you can't really put her on a defined range because she's a beginning player. And a lot of people ask me that question a lot. They're like, well, don't you have trouble with beginners and amateurs because you never know what, they're ha what they have? I'm like, generally, no, because generally I just play pretty fundamentally solid against them and let them make big mistakes. Um, I'm not gonna overthink things, and in this situation, I'm gonna be like, okay, well, she's just gonna have to show me pocket queens or four five or pocket fives, which is essentially the only hands that she can really beat us with. I mean, the six doesn't change much, I don't think. It's not like, well, I mean, seven, eight. She did have ace, deuce. She could have had seven, eight, I guess, or deuce, three, or something silly like that. But if I'm Ronnie, especially one factor I don't think that we talk about normally in a situation like this is he's playing in the shark cage, right? With that extra, you know, jump in the shark, bluff, you get a little bonus. On top of that, even more important is this is a winner take all. It's a winner take all situation. So for him to fold here after putting in so many chips and being on the shorter stack, I think, you know, is a worse play than calling overall for a lot of reasons, but specifically because it's winner take all. This is a situation where I'm not gonna like bank on this hope that, you know, to, I can put a read on this woman having this or that. Like he just assumes like, okay, well she's got me beat because she's playing the hand the way someone who would play the hand normally would probably have me beat. But again, it's a first time player maybe, uh, you know, you just can't be folding hands this big. Ronnie makes the lay down and <laughs> does she just, Wow, it's like, this is an epic hand, I love it. I hope you guys enjoyed that or learned something. I guess the lesson here really, ultimately, summing it all up, is um, yeah, against beginning amateur players, just, you know, just call. <laughs>